Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Puck Cast. I am Jason. And I am John. Happy New Year, everybody. Welcome to 2020. The first Mav Puck Cast of 2020. On tonight's episode of 2020. <laughs> I see all these I keep seeing all these social media posts about <laughs> yep. it now. I'm like, that's hilarious. The Barbara Walters stuff. Like, yeah, exactly. I can't stop laughing at those. I know, that seems so far away when that show started, what, like, start back, probably hey, started 70s, 80s. Jetsons promised me flying cars, I don't have them yet, so no lying to me. but you do have self-driving cars. Mm, yeah, they'll self-drive you <laughs> off a cliff. <laughs> Elon Musk, people have asked him about flying cars, and he's like, it doesn't seem really practical to have them fly. So, <laughs> yeah. believe me, if, if, he, if anybody could invent them... He would invent them. So, I mean, maybe he'll just do it on a lark at some point. We think about the number of accidents that happen on the street. If you really want that 100 feet in the air and then plummeting right? to your death, it's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, well, maybe that was a cartoon thing we should, you know. Exactly. A wily right. coyote kind of thing that we yep. should just leave in the cartoons. That's right. So let's talk hockey. Let's talk hockey. Our Mavs went a long ways away. They way up to the did. northeast and played a team of bears. Yes, black bears. Specifically. Yeah, from Hockey East. Sadly, not the outcomes we predicted and not the outcomes I think we would have wanted, considering no. Maine was a fairly evenly matched team. Yep. Yeah, it was, we a, get, it was a tough little series. It was a, it was a weird schedule, too, because the Friday night game was at 5 p.m. our time, which would have been 6 p.m. Eastern time. Which isn't unheard of. That's, it isn't unheard that's of. fairly common. No, that, yeah. That I'm okay yeah. with, yeah. And then the Saturday game was at noon. noon Eastern and 11 In a time. different city. In a different city, two hours away. I didn't I realize it was that far away. Yeah, it's that far away. Yeah. And I assume, not knowing and didn't see too much posted, but I assume that they got on the bus and drove to Orno. That's, Friday night. That, that's what Terry Leahy made it sound like okay. on the uh, radio broadcast. And that's that's kind of what I heard too, but I just didn't know for I, sure. I didn't know for sure either. I You kind of wonder, would they get a good night's sleep and then drive there in the morning? Or, right. So apparently they just drove there after the game. So Yeah, we were talking about, like, I think I would prefer it that way. I'd, I'd rather have it be, I'd rather get on a bus after a game and drive for a couple hours and get some sleep rather than yeah, go to a hotel and have to I, I agree. early. And, yeah. And then have those, like, Bus legs, you know, when you come off, yeah, yeah. I thought so, they, I thought they played pretty well Friday night. Uh, yeah, especially the first like three quarters, two thirds ish of the first period. I'm right. like, we are gonna steamroll these guys. This is gonna yep. be awesome. Uh, you know, we're putting a lot of shots on. Unfortunately, I think the story of the weekend really is an opportunity lost because right. you know, we had a chance. We had a lot of chances, and we had a chance to win Friday night. You know, penalties kind of put us behind the eight ball. They sure did. And losing Ward yeah, for, that, for a big chunk of that game. That five-minute major and getting ejected for him was was a huge hit. I think having him down the stretch, it's, it's a different team. Yeah. Um, props, but then, to, props to Austin Roden for sh- stopping 46 or 48 yeah. shots. Yeah. Yeah. So he was huge. Yeah. Uh, Ward was kind of, I don't know, the way I didn't, obviously without it being on TV, it's it's hard to say kind of what was happening. I didn't hear him mentioned on the broadcast nearly as much as we kind of normally hear him. So I don't Today, know what the, happened. In the Saturday game? The Saturday game, yeah. yeah. So that was, that was kind of interesting, I think, to me, just that, you know, we lost him for a good chunk of Friday's game, and then it seemed like, I don't know if he was timid or, or tenant or if the coaches said something, if he needed to hold back or something like that. But um, like you said, it's hard to tell on a radio broadcast because you can't see Always, yeah. all the players on the ice moving around. So, and a lot of times it's funny because I'll, I'll watch, I'll watch and listen and on a game or something. And I'll, I'll say something like, Oh, check out that. And then, a second later, right. the broadcast says, oh, and, you know, you're, that's the same thing I just said. I swear they're on Amazon and listening to me. Yeah, they probably are. <laughs> Who isn't? 
That's right. So yeah, that's it's it's really hard knowing like are you how much of that is spin, right? Like how much is that right. just that's what they're watching and that's what what yeah. they're paying attention to. Sure. And, so when we get to to picking our players of the weekend, that might be a little bit skewed to the Friday, you know, their performance on Friday to night. The, because, to the game that we actually got to watch. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. But I mean, so you know, we kind of lost an opportunity to steal the win. You know, we played pretty well, but but you know, I really felt like we should have won Friday. I thought so uh, too. And then you know we're looking at getting another tie. We get a tie out of it, so at least we didn't lose. We're looking at another tie on Saturday, and then. You know, a fairly late goal, and Maine ends up winning 3-2. Yeah, they got that game. I believe uh, Maine scored that goal with 244 left in the third period. It was right yeah, there. Yeah, something, something, right something, there something the on end. the sheet. So. Yeah, it was, it was that Trail Max player. Yeah. Which I trail know. Mix, yeah. Trail Mix, I know. See, you guys could do, if he was on our team, Jolene and the girls could do some really oh, we fun totally signs for him. For that. Yeah, you have a little Chex Mix thing on there. Yeah, it'd be great. Yeah, did you hear that we got a new player on the UNO too? Oh yeah. I mean, he got tired of playing for the Avalanche, so McKinnon apparently decided to uh, <laughs> yeah, join UNO. It, was it, it was. It sounded like McKinnon. That's what it sounded like to me. Maybe it was Polkinen, but but I, even then, I'm saying it more like his name was like Polkinen. You know, it was it was like it was. Uh, and it was like you never heard the pole part of it. No. I I mean I don't doubt that that's Bridget what he was, was saying. Bridget was like but... who they were talking about. Yeah, he, they definitely didn't emphasize the 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 syllables correctly. I mean, on the every... name. Everyone in our household was was pretty dead set on it. It sounded like McKinnon does. So. so I recorded a pronunciation guide and put it up on Twitter. Yeah. And then, as I do, just start, you know, thinking out loud online, I, you know, made the comments on the tweets. I said, maybe I should do game updates, you know, during intermission. An intermission report. And of course, everybody's like, well, that's a great idea. So then I'm like, great, I got to, you know. Make myself look presentable <laughs> since it's going to involve video. A video. Darn it! I, I have to put on pants. Up, I had to set up the TV studio <laughs> with the black background in the basement, and so we did that during the intermissions this weekend and the second or the the second intermission on Friday, and then post game, and then both intermissions Saturday and post game, and then I know other, they're pretty good. Well, it's interesting. I, thank you. I appreciate that. I, I smell a future Patreon thing. I I do too. Yeah. You know, and, and somebody, it was actually our, our internship advisor when we uh, majored in the, uh, when we were journalism majors at UNO, he commented on Twitter, he's like, you know, for the home games, you'll have to, you know, go to different sections <laughs> of the arena and record them. I'm like, wow, apparently we're doing, <laughs> doing this. Wow, live updates from Baxter. Uh... The, the problem is the, you know, the internet and the cellular in there is can sometimes be kind of slow. I mean, I could be posting a first intermission update and it might not actually get done posting until after the game is over. So I'll, you know, that'll that'll definitely be an interesting, uh, interesting thing if we try it. I'll have to maybe go walk over by, you know, the glass that overlooks the practice ice and upload it from there because there's usually less interference or less congestion there. So we'll see if we do that. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. It's kind of fun to do. It's good to Dude, practice stuff. Yeah. I'm fine with this until you do one from the bathroom, and then I don't I'm know. I'm not about doing this. one from the bath. Well, you're you're. They're gonna, on the wall. You're going to be at these games. You may be participating. If we do a you know post game wrap up down in the oh. lobby by the doors, you may be participating in that. So just just get ready. Or on the intermission report. Yeah, yeah, just get ready. I don't know. I think we tried this before. I failed pretty miserably. And uh, like, yeah. What did you call nope. uh, Tyler Weiss? What was his first name uh, during that live video? What did I call him? That's a good point. What did I? It wasn't. Yeah. Was it Kevin Weiss or something like that? I don't know. I can't remember that. My apologies. I'm stupid, Bridget, so. Bridget decided to do a Facebook Live at the season ticket pickup, and you were totally not <laughs> like, ready for that. I am not not prepared for this. So just mentally prepare. I'm. I may ask you to participate. If you're not ready, I'll just do it by myself. I'm. <laughs> I have no I'll problem. Your, I have I'm, no problem sounding like I'm an idiot. typically the video video videographer, so um, maybe I'll take that role for our intermission reports at least. Okay, so I'm going to be doing this by myself. So anyway, back to the series. <laughs> I think, I think it was a, I think it was a missed opportunity. Although Maine is undefeated in the state of Maine this season, so teams haven't had a lot of success against them at home. Yeah. Yeah, at home or 
in Portland, Maine. Well, but Portland, this is the broadcasters on Friday oh, were they, saying did that they say this be, was the first one. It'd be the first time they've played there. Oh, okay. I I did not know that. And it sounded like it was a really interesting setup, just from what the broadcast was saying. Right. The backup goalies weren't able to sit with the rest of their team. And then there was some confusion when they were trying to get off the ice, and the refs had a whole. UNO onto the bench and because they started going yeah. to the wrong doors. Apparently and... there was no replay booth there, so... Yeah. It was... I don't know. It's almost like, I don't know, like they decided we just didn't want to play at Baxter, so we're going to go play at Moylan Ice Arena or something That's right. like that. So, very, very strange. Very odd. Uh, players, you want to highlight anyone specifically? Yeah, I'm going to go with Austin Roden. Oh, you're going with the goalie. I'm going with the goalie. Okay. I'm going with the goalie. Obviously, the, goalie. the Saturday out, outing probably wasn't what he was looking for, but he played really well on Friday night in the game we got to see. He stopped a lot of uh, prime opportunities that Maine had. And I thought it was just, I thought it was a good game for him. I felt like he was starting to kind of get into a groove. And uh, as we had talked about, you know, give the guy more playing time early on, and I think, uh, you know, he'd be really solid right now. So I think he's... I, think I commend him for stepping in with yeah. Seville being out. So. Yeah, it was all on his shoulders. So mm-hmm. he hadn't gotten a lot of playing time, you know, going into the last couple series. So Yeah, and it's good to see him, you know, step up because there's a lot of talk about how long does Seville stay, you know, is he sure. one of those guys that's, you know, a couple years and then he, he bolts for some... Pro level hockey, you know, playing yeah. ECHL, EHL, you know, who knows NHL, something like that. So, you know, if we only have him this season and next, or it's really, it's really season. important that we have somebody, you know, seasoned who's, right. who's ready to go. Even if we get another, you know, well, top, you know, NHL prospect type goaltender, you still want to have one of those solid guys on the roster because sometimes that guy ends up being the guy, you know, when you need somebody dependable uh, that can play. And I thought he looked. I thought he looked dependable this weekend. I thought he's looked, you know, good the last couple series. I yeah. Uh, hopefully, I guess, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a coaching thing. So it's really yeah. hard to say that we should or shouldn't get him uh, in, in some kind of rotation. But No, I, you know, I, 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 got I to completely imagine, agree, yeah. I got to imagine that Gavnet's taking a look at it saying, hey, maybe he needs, you know, maybe we don't ride Seville all the way down through NCHC play the next few months you know maybe maybe we see Roden a couple if, if there's if there's, a, if there's some opportunities where it makes sense to start him sure yeah uh brush it which, which is how the main guy pronounced it on the broadcast which i thought was kind of a weird way but uh i i was very impressed yeah with his play his positioning uh, he challenged, which is what I like to see. Uh, you know, a lot of times with Maine, with hockey e schools in general, uh, you don't typically want to give them a whole lot of space. Uh, no easy outs, no you know, no easy lanes. Make sure kind of everything's kind of buttoned up, and and if they want to make a pass, it's got to go through one of our guys, right? And so he seemed to really kind of play that kind of style, which I liked, and he had the power play goal. Uh, he had a couple other good chances on Friday, and then I think he got assist on Saturday's game, if I remember right. Yeah, uh, he got his he got assist on Schultz's first goal. So yes, he did. That was great for John Schultz to get his first NCAA goal. I know we got to use our new sign too. Girls made yeah. a sign for him, and then he didn't play, and we couldn't. We haven't got him to autograph it yet, but. Jillian was really happy that she's able to tweet out his son. Yeah, so. you know, people were talking because we hadn't seen him. We didn't see him during the Arizona State series, did we? Or we didn't no, see him as much. No, he didn't yeah. play Arizona State. And so we were wondering if maybe he was injured, but uh, but he looks like Doesn't, he's good to go now. And I'm glad he got that goal. If it was a small that's injury, a, yeah. Yeah, so. that's good for him. He's a really nice kid. And our guy Keck. I know. The poor, like, I feel, I, I again, I've said this. I feel so bad for the kid because he does all these good things and he gets all these good opportunities and he seems to be snake bitten. And Friday was that way. He had a couple really good chances on Friday, but couldn't bury one. 
and he gets one on Saturday. He gets one so, on Saturday, yeah. yay, Cac, because I'm right. just glad he was able to put the puck in the back of the net finally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got the equalizer there uh, toward the end of the second period. And at that point, I was just like, let's just hold on, get to the third period, and see if we can get something going or hold them and go to overtime. And that did not happen, unfortunately. We gave up the goal late in the third period. Yeah. And, you know, looking at listening and looking at the game, I think that Friday, not, not so much. I thought we had some good chances on the power play. Right. Uh, Saturday, I'll go out on a limb and say, we lost that game because we couldn't produce on the power plays. Right. I mean, we had ample opportunities. We did. And we went over like, and that's, I mean, in a game that's close, that's your chance to, to take a lead, to change the momentum. You know, we couldn't get a goal to tie it up on the power sure. play. Uh, yeah, I don't... And last year, I thought we had a pretty good power play. We did. And there have been times this year that it's looked really productive. Yeah, there have been moments when it's looked good, especially early on this season. Yeah, and then we hit these streaks yep. where we go over for a while. Right. And I'm a little worried that that's going to... That's going to bite us in the real way, so the rest of the way here. I, you, you could be right about that. You could definitely be right. You got to take advantage of those uh, man yeah. advantage opportunities. So, sadly, sadly we come we home with one point. Yeah. Well, I mean, no points because it's not a conference race, but we get a tie out of that. So. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't help us pairwise at all. No, but, so. you know, but we're not, but we're not worried about that. As I've talked about, would you like me to go on another <laughs> another rant? All, we're not worried about the pairwise. Our focus is on winning it, the auto. It would have been it would have been nice to go into the the final stretch of conference play here at five hundred. We're not quite at five hundred. We're eight, nine, and three right now. Close, but I was hoping for more positive results heading into North Dakota this upcoming weekend. Yeah. Which we'll get to in a little bit. But before we do... But before we get into that... If you haven't bought merchandise from the team store, I have some sad news to report. I I bought this jacket I'm wearing right now, which nobody can see because we don't have video on this podcast. That's I bought Patreon this. Thing. I bought this at an end-of-year sale at the uh, merchandise store on the lower level at Baxter Arena. Uh, you'll be able to buy it, just not on the lower level of Baxter Arena. No. So Apparently, ju- they they closed the doors on the team store, and they moved us to kiosk locations on the concourse. Yeah, now there was always one kiosk location kind of in the the northwest West. end near the... Right corner. where you they, come they, up the stairs. There. They don't have a lot of stuff no. there. And it's usually really congested because, as you know, uh, my dad and I oftentimes do laps before the games and yes. during the intermission. So there's not a lot of room there. There's not a lot of merchandise there. But Jason's wife attended the men's basketball game. Men's basketball game. And the team shop on the lower level West Concourse is closed mm-hmm. with a note that it's a party room now. And there are tables and chairs in there. And Jolene texted us this and texted us this picture. And you guys posted it on the Twitter account. So if you want to see pictures of what it looks like, the kiosk and the new store location thing, the new uh, uh, party room, we'll say, uh, head over to MavPuck on Twitter and you can see the pictures and stuff so bridget tweeted the pictures and she tagged baxter arena and baxter arena applied they said we are making renovations to that space for a party area with extra locations for merchandise throughout the concourse to be determined okay so i gotta ask you what do you (laughs) think of having additional merchandise stands kiosks in the concourse as opposed to having that dedicated store down near the entrance. Conceptually, I don't mind it. I actually kind of like okay. the idea that you can go shopping at any point in time. Because part of the problem with the team store was if you got an inkling to buy something, you pretty much had to leave the game to do so. 
So yeah, if you went during intermission, it would be a long kind of walk. You could you have to walk to that west staircase or take the elevator on the west well, side of the arena. For a while there, down. they didn't have the kiosk on that west side. Oh, so your only no, option no, no. was yeah. the team. Store. I meant I meant going down to the team store. You've got to you oh know, yeah take the stairs down. But on then the you west have side. to yeah. then you have to deal with exiting and entering because you have to go past the ticket entrance. Yeah, you do. Now they they had kind of the post and rope set up so you could walk, but it you always wondered if am I going to have to go out and go back in and right. you know, it kind of it was a little bit intimidating. They could have they could have configured that a little bit better when they planned the arena right. to begin with. So, I like it from that concept that it moves that into a more accessible location. Sure, because the, it, as you remember and mm-hmm. I, my apologies for interrupting nope. you, but as you remember, at the CenturyLink Center downtown, obviously right. the, the merchandise was in the concourse. Right. However, as I think you were about to say, the concourse, the concourse is much is bigger. bigger down there. I know. And so, like, I have a hard time getting through the concourse at intermissions mm-hmm. as it is. Like, right. I go for a beer at intermission, and I'm lazy enough that I go to the closest location because I don't want to have to deal with, like, swimming upstream it's right below the staircase to our section right it's but convenient. it's but there's still a lot of congestion right there with people getting it's beer people still, going to the restroom yeah. yeah people are crossing you're just trying to get across and i had a thought about this so i'm a little worried about how that like logistically logistically how it is going to work I'm also interested to see what kind of selection they'll be able to have because it's not like you're going to be it's not like they have like you know, massive numbers of things in right. the store, but you get multiple sizes because not everybody's the same size. Now, Bernie Lambrecht mentioned this idea on Twitter when Bridget posted the pictures, and I actually think that this is an intriguing idea. Would you like to hear it? I would love okay. it. Okay. You know the alcove on the south side of the arena by the Godfather's Pizza stand? Right. Where the Blue Line Club, where the Blue Line Club is, meets yeah. before the game. Okay. It would be interesting, potentially, to have that be your little in-game temporary merchandise store, and then have the Blue Line Club room be down in this new party room where the store was. Now, again, as we've talked about before, it's kind of inconvenient to get down to that store and go down the stairs and all that. But it would give the Blue Line Club a kind of a dedicated, closed-off party room at the arena. And then the merchandise would kind of have room to breathe back there by the Godfather's Pizza booth and not really be in the way of people rounding the concourse. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Not, not, that, I, not that I'm trying to move the Blue Line Club out of the arena. I just, I just thought, you know, since they never got their dedicated room, that could actually be... The, you mentioned one challenge to that. The other challenge to that is is that there is a concession stand there with Godfather's Pizza that has right. the draft beer and stuff. So you're going to have to do, I guess, kind of lose that. I mean, yeah, you'll keep so... the, you can wall it off and keep the, the concession sales and stuff that are there, but it's going to have to come out of the Godfather's Pizza place. So you're, you're taking, you know three entry points for concessions and moving it down to one or two. So you're going to have some congestion problems in that area with the sales of that. And there's some pop-up food vendors and stuff that are going to have there to get like, reorganized well, to provide the space Potentially, I, I guess it would depend on how much room the merchandise actually ended up taking. Because I, right. I've been in the alcove because I've been in the Blue Line Club area, but I haven't really, you know, just like taking a lot of time to analyze right how much room's in there so that's an interesting thing i will say though that back in the civic auditorium days the blue line club had their own dedicated room yeah so they had a room and then they had somebody in there with like a keg selling um, yeah so you could potentially do that in the the area that was formerly known as the the team shop, the Maverick Locker. Yeah. I guess it's still the Maverick Locker Room. I guess you can revamp that I guess. for birthday parties and other stuff. And I will tell you, too, I did notice this, and I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there were a couple of games this fall where back by the skate rental to Holland Ice, which is just right back from where right. they think, I did notice it looked like they were having some 
pre-game events back there with food because they'd have like a little check-in table. And again, I don't know if that was related to the UNO game and like a little sponsor event down there or if it was related to something going on on Holland Ice. But it was kind of an interesting mm -hmm. thing. So maybe they thought, you know, it'd be nicer for us to have this nice glassed-in, closed-off room rather than just having the people yeah. here by the skate rental stand. So yeah. I don't what? know. It's, it's interesting to see. I just I wish they'd planned that better when they built the arena because it's nice right. to have a dedicated store. You know what I'm saying? The question I have about all this okay. is the, the selection. So one of the big right. complaints that I've had for a long time is that, in general, I can't find UNO stuff in Omaha. It, sure. It's a pet peeve of mine that I can go to stores, yeah. even Lawler's. I, you know, I, I love that they do so much for the university. Right. But even their store, like, I go there, and there's this, like, wall of UNO stuff. It's, it's not the same stuff I find at the team store. It's usually something different, slightly right. different, totally different. There's usually a rack of UNO stuff, but it's like you've got this huge thing of Creighton. You've got gobs of UNL stuff. Yeah, and, and obviously, obviously the Husker thing makes sense. Yeah. And because they're official, they 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 are the the vendor who provides in uh, during the Creighton basketball games the Creighton stuff. Right. They've got a lot, and they used to have more UNO when they were the official vendor, but now they're not. They're not. And so, like, that's always. So no, nothing to knock them for their selection. It's just, it's kind of one of those things, like, that's where I go to thinking I can find it. I can't find it there. And you go to, like, Dick's Sporting Goods. They've got nothing. You go to, like, Shields. They've got nothing. Yeah. And then you try, so you think, well, okay, maybe I'll go on campus. This one time I was looking for a Christmas gift, right? I'm like, well, maybe I'll go on campus and go to the university store on campus. Right. But getting into that, it's got like weird hours. It's nearly impossible to find parking. It's hard to get to. Well, it's hard it's a pain. because, and then you get there, and there's really not that much that's that as a as a general consumer, as a fan of the sport or a supporter of the university, there's not a whole lot of opportunities for us to support it through vendor sales type it's thing. it's hard to park it's hard to park at the campus and right. then they've got those meters out front and last time they were there we were there there was something different about the meters i think maybe we had to download now you have it. to have the app i think you had to download you have an to app. Have the so park they don't Omaha take app. change they don't no. take change right so there's not even meters anymore like now it's literally a sign that says download the app and pay see now i thought there were meters but there were no coin mm -hmm. things you just had to doubt so you have that go but i will tell you in front of the Epley administration building which is just right to the east of that there are still meters that i think it's either their meters or signs i don't know but it's like 30 minute parking so if you're quick park right. in front of the administration but again it's a not, lot of people don't you still know have to it's, walk it's, all the way down to yeah, the yeah it's not it's not fan friendly no and they've got a so, lot of good merchandise in there it's just not i don't conducive. we don't know what the plan is but i no. will say that if the plan of the university or if they're listening and they need a good idea okay if if they could find a way that there could be a university store that supports all the athletics, not not just Baxter Athletic, but we're talking swimming and diving, you know, sure. golf teams, things like that. Some, Sell stuff golf like polos have, with the UNO. Stuff like they have at the bookstore because they've got right. stuff for track and yes. all those different types so of things. So if they want to put all that stuff into a I mean, store thing yeah. on campus with, you know, visitor parking, store only kind of thing, and have it be something that the public can easily get to, and that's going to be the bulk of the sales. And what we're going to do is find out, okay, at men's basketball, these are the things that sell the best. So we're going and, to have the most popular, like, right. hoodies and, you know, um, stocking caps and, and some of the scars. Yeah, like, some of the little, like, cowbells. Yeah, exactly. Right. And it's going to be different. You know, I would expect what sure. sells well at a hockey game is not going to sell well at a basketball no, game. No, it'll, it'll be like different that. merchandise, yeah. I could see that working, especially to idea number two is I would have one of those stands have special edition merchandise. Things that are, uh, you know... The Colorado Avalanche did this when we were out there because we saw them play a division rivalry. So they had shirts in the team store that were specific to that game, right. that opponent. And it's but, amazing but I, the number of people I saw... Buying that over right. the normal merchandise because it it seemed like something special. See, I don't think they're going to do that. See, I, when when Lawler's and did I think they're losing when, out on when things Lawler's like that. did merchandise downtown, they would have 
special shirts, like the first time, I think, if I recall correctly, because there's a couple that we got for North Dakota, they would do special ones like Beat North Dakota with the UNO logo right. on it. And then there was one that had like the two helmets of the two teams for some matchup. I don't know if it was when we were doing a sellout game or, or something like that, but I would buy one of those every time there was a special edition shirt. And I loved having those and I loved wearing those. And like you said, NHL teams do that and you're able to yeah. buy them because they all tend to have really nice team shops. And so it is it is incredibly frustrating. I'm just worried they're just going to get away. We're going to have like a couple shirt options. It's going to be nothing that cap. The, the ordinary fan that you know, foam, you know, doesn't attend. Foam finger. Yeah, you yeah. attend more than one game, this stuff is useless to you. Right. Um, I think that's a loss because this is a university that's talked about, you know, Building how, their brand, getting right. people wearing their merchandise, getting their logo out into the community. And the this problem is, how you is do it. if you go to games, you know this as well as I do, relatively speaking, there aren't a lot of people wearing UNO merchandise. Right. You know? Right. And we need to have more people. You go to you go to like a North Dakota hockey game. Or you go to a Minnesota hockey game. Gordon North Dakota, see a green. Right. You're gonna Hello? see you, all those people seem to be wearing jerseys. Yeah. I know it's not all of them, but well, most of them are. The same thing at, at Minnesota games back yeah. when they were getting big crowds. People would wear the merchandise. It was cool. And you don't see that for UNO. I remember we went Denver, we followed Denver up to North Dakota to see right. DU play North Dakota, yeah. right? It's a great venue. And we were there in 2011. Yeah. Great. And I remember going there with my friend, and we were walking around their team store. Oh, it's beautiful. Going, oh my gosh, there is nothing in this store that is not green. It is. It's Dominant. fantastic. Like I look at that thing, and I think, man, if I was a fan of this team, there'd yeah. be like a dozen things I'd want to buy in here. Why isn't... You know, what's what's UNO's dominant color? Black. Why is not everything that we sell black on white instead of, like, why would you sell a white shirt? That arena should be dark as night with everyone wearing black yeah. so that you can pick out all of the non-UNO <laughs> fans. I know. But yeah. you know, I know. I mean, we do it when they go to the Avs games all the time. Like, we razz the people that are, you know, coming in to support the other team. It's all in good fun. I'm not yeah. vindictive about it. But... Yeah, most of the people we sit around are all wearing Avs gear. I know. Our fans don't really show their spirit, and it's just, it's hard to get merchandise. And Pat Lawler's a good friend of ours, so he does what he, but he's, it's it's different now that he doesn't have his large standalone booth in the arena. So right. So you want more people to wear this stuff. You've got to make it available. Branding. Yeah. You've got to make it a desire that people, and, and part of that is limited edition. Yeah. People, there's, we, I'm sure you've talked about this or or learned about this at, at conferences or something. But yeah, five, six, seven years ago, it was everything I heard at every conference I went to. FOMO, everyone's FOMO. Yeah, we're no, missing out. And yes, everyone's fact, worried yes. about losing an opportunity. Right? Yeah. This is it. This yeah. is the series. It's the North Dakota specific shirt. Get it while North Dakota's here, because when North Dakota's gone, so is, so the, is shirt. the shirt. Yeah. People will buy that. Like crazy. FOMO is a big motivator. If you just have a generic pullover or a generic hoodie that's $75, a lot of people will look at that and they'll be like, you know, I'm yeah. just going to wait until there's a sale. And then right. they, they forget when there's a sale and then they just don't end up getting it. And I would rather have stuff be priced to move. That's one of the things I liked about Lawler's was they would have the expensive, you know, premium like Adidas and Nike right. stuff. But then they'd also have just you know, hoodies with like, that said Mavericks with the O on them and they'd have specials on those and they'd be like, you know, 25 bucks for one well, of those, which I is remember, more reasonable for me. I remember, were we, I think it was at Baxter that they did the merchandise of the game thing. Yeah, I, I remember, right? I, 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 you know, that might have been downtown where they had the, was it the, only the, Lawler's, the, the Lawler's Save of the Game. The, you I remember know, that? The Lawler's yes, the Save, save of the Game. game. That was I know Lawler's they had that. They, I know they, they had that. that but I could have swore they had something at They may Baxter. have tried that at Baxter. I can't remember. See, but we should get back to that. Like, yeah. we should get back to, here's the merchandise yeah. that sells. Here are the things that you're a true fan. You should show that you were at the North Dakota right. Series with this North Dakota merchandise. Or Yeah. You know, exactly. special edition foam fingers. I don't care. I am telling you, you you make it seem like this is it. This is your one opportunity to get it, and people will buy it. 
But I'm just worried now that they've gotten rid of the team shop and they're just going to go to kiosks that... It's going to be generic stuff, right? It's yeah. going to be the the ordinary, run-of-the-mill, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. might be so they don't have to store as much merchandise. It might be stuff that is applicable to all the teams. So rather than having a Omaha basketball-specific shirt, it might just be... Omaha, Omaha Mavericks. Right. Something that you can wear. And, and that, again, that takes away Which, from it. And, and are, they, are they going to sell jerseys? Because you got your jersey at the team shop. Yeah. That's the current iteration of what they wear. Although, you, yeah. I think you have the one with the drawstring. But anyway, you've got yeah. the current iteration design that they uh, wear. Yeah, I've got the black. And they, home, they yeah. generally have those hanging up in that store. But are they going to take the time to have those on, on racks? And if they well, do, where are Well, and those things are that? so different that, you know... Like it's not like small, medium, large. No, it's not. It's like it's like forty-seven. For you've you've got to like try those things on, right? You know, because I bought some, and, and a lot of times a, a and bigger it, size than what you think. And is that's what the you point need. I'm making is something like that. If I can't get that at a kiosk, which is a very difficult thing to stock at a kiosk, right? Where do I get that? I don't. Where know. Where am I going to find this? I don't know. Because before I understood that it wasn't at the kiosk because it's downstairs in the team store. Right. That made sense. If there's no team store. Where do I, as a fan, go to get? This I stuff? don't know. Well, why didn't they plan this better? I think they just got rid of the team store to get you, I, Bridget, Jolene, your daughters, out of the you know concourse <laughs> fast faster after the post game celebration. <laughs> just want you out of there, man. If they're sitting here loitering, we got to pay you know a couple people to staff this. It's much cheaper if we can just get lead. them out of Come this on. place. Yeah. I yeah I don't know. Maybe they just did it so we talk about it and give them ideas. So that's fine. Steal my ideas. I'm okay I'm, with it. I'm intrigued by it. Not that I'm trying to... I, I just... I would love to... I think it would be cool for the Blue Line Club to potentially think about the concept of having their room down there in the old merchandise store and then where the alcove is, have the merchandise there. Yeah. You know, potentially. Maybe. Since since most of the people only hang out in the Blue Line Club area pre-game, there you could have your pre-game party with your snacks and your refreshments and most of the attendees would see you coming in the door. So that might prove to be a nice incentive for, you know, people who are thinking about joining. But anyway, that's so enough on, on that topic. So thank you, Jolene, <laughs> for uh, giving giving Jason and I a tangent topic to talk about. We, uh, we appreciate that because we can rip on that for... So for all of those listeners out there that hated that segment, tweet Jolene. Tweet Jolene, yeah. <laughs> she's, the, she's your nemesis. <laughs> I, I'm, glad she, I'm glad she sent that to us. I'm I I love topics like that. That's yeah. Mav Puck was built on the everybody. Oh, I hate those topics. Like that's what people love. They love the fluff topics. So not a fluff topic. Yeah. New decade. A new decade. We decided that we wanted to kind of look back at the last decade. Yes. And kind of pick a first team and second team all, all decade all decade team. Yeah. So John did his list and I did mine and yeah. I will tell you full disclosure here we have not looked at each other's list we have not talked no. about who is on whose list nope. so this could be very interesting yeah uh and and see I was going to make it tougher on Jason I was just going to have a single all decade team three forwards two defensemen and one goalie but then Jason suggested we have a second Second team all decade. I was kind of a little worried that there'd be a lot of really good players that, you know, there would have been yeah really good forwards that aren't top three. Exactly. I was ex- I was excited to leave some some big names off the list just to so just to be provocative. It'll be, yeah, it'll be interesting. Everyone out there listening is going to have to tweet us and tell us who we missed and blah blah blah. But okay. I think let's start with the easy. Let's start goaltending. Okay. So. First team, team goaltender, Ryan Massa. Darn, we got the same. I'm guy. going with Massa Magic. I thought you I, might. I thought you might. I, now I will tell you, I will tell you. I was, I was kind of tempted to to be a little bit different and go with a guy from who had played early in the decade. He, he was uh, John Faulkner, was a goaltender okay. of ours. He wasn't a flashy goaltender. He wasn't necessarily a goaltender that we remembered, but he was a fairly solid goaltender during his tenure mm-hmm. at UNO. So I thought about doing that, but I'm like, I've got to go with Ryan Massa. I, I think that what he did for the program yep. is what solidified him as the number one. Yeah. And having interacted with him on a few occasions, uh, we have uh, 
we have a jersey that hangs in our house uh, that has mm-hmm. everyone from a year that he didn't start that year. Uh, and so the jersey must have got signed before the start of the year. And he had actually come in late that year. Yeah, and so, so his was, name wasn't on there. That he, was a, we reached yeah. out to him and he went out of his way to make himself available just to sign a jersey that's for us. That's awesome. And that's he's, the kind of guy that tells He's a first-class guy. About. His sister Gianna, Bridget would communicate with her. She was she was awesome, too. He put his heart and soul into yeah. that 2014-15 season when they got to the Frozen Four. He played great. And he was a guy who he had... Yeah, he had played for a season, and then he left. And I think it was his concussion year. He had left maybe he, kind of red yeah. shirt. And UNO had brought in Anthony Stolarz. Who was okay. one of the signatures I believe I had to identify on that jersey for? Yeah, because I didn't recognize it. And then Stolarz left at the semester b- break. I think he either went to play pro or he went to play major junior. He went I to play major junior. Okay. And so then Massa came back, mm-hmm. came in, and, uh, you know, he was a it. great goaltender. For he us. was a really good goaltender. Man, if, if he had been able to redshirt that year yeah. and then come back, and then if he'd been able to play in the 2015 16 season, who knows what might who have knows? happened that season. But he's a terrific guy. I had to go with him because he became a really solid goaltender for UNO. So who do you have? So who do you want to? Yeah, who are so who's with your next? second? Who's my second string? Oh, my goal. second team goaltender. Second I'm going, team. With, going with Evan Wenninger. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got to go with Evan. Recent guy. Okay. I got to go with Evan. I know, I know that there were times when it wasn't always pretty when Evan was in net. However, you have to look at the team that was playing in front of him. You have to look at the style of play going on in front of him. So I had to go with Evan just because, I mean, you look at the number of, of minutes that that guy logged in net during his four years. I mean, he was basically the guy. And, uh, and I think he did a yeoman's job. I, I think so. I, this was like, I'm interested Massa hear, was easy, right? Yeah, Massa so was easy. Yep. Massa, I was like, okay, well, I know my, my, my number one, I'm okay. So now I'm thinking, all right, number two, yeah. who we got? Who'd you and go with? I, my, my first thought was Stolars, but I was like, well, I'm only doing that because he had, he's the only goaltender in the decade that's had success next level. Right. And that's, I had trouble but, with that too. I'm like, do I, do I. Do we go off of what they do? Do we go off what they do after or what they do while they're there? Now, I try, I went off of what they did while they right. were here. But then I was like, so then I was into this. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm not, I, I don't want to factor in what they do outside of the university. Okay. So you know. But I then I'm troubled with like, do I go off of like stats and which stat do I go off of? Yeah. Or is it a character kind of thing? Is it what they meant to the university? So I was really struggling with the second is it, is it their whole... So, that's kind of with Wenninger, I kind of went with sort of his whole body of work. Right. On a game-by-game basis, it might not have been that impressive, but if you look back at all the, the records that he compiled while he was here, I mean, it, you know... So that's why I went with him as opposed to John Faulkner as my second-team goaltender. Well, so that's the interesting thing is okay. you, my second string is Faulkner. <laughs> yeah, John Faulkner was a great guy. Yeah, I remember... <laughs> I remember when Mike Kemp recruited him, he was very excited. He said he will be the finest goaltender that we've had since Dan Ellis, who was one of the few UNO goaltenders who's had success in the NHL. And Faulkner never quite never quite rose to the Dan Ellis kind of level, but he was a if you look at his numbers, you look at his goals against average, I mean he was a pretty damn solid goaltender. Yeah, and it it's kind of one of those things like for me, I look at it going, okay, I, I'm juggling between our two picks, right? I've got right. Evan and I've got Faulkner, and I'm kind of thinking, all right, where, where are we going to go? I looked at it like, if you put Evan in Faulkner's day and age, not that it was yep. that long ago, but what what would I expect out of him? You know, with the support that he had in front of him and, and that kind of play, does he... You know, does he put up the same kind of numbers? Is he the same kind of role? Is he the guy that you lean on? And I'm not sure that Dean Blaise would have leaned on him as much as he did Faulkner. Right. And you and, look at that. I mean, Faulkner, Faulkner's goals against average was below three goals. Right. Which was... He's a really solid goaltender. Yeah. And in, a, in an age where I'd say, you know, the the type of play and style of, of play factors a lot into the success that that the goaltenders kind of have and, and, and don't have and, and that stuff. So Well, Faulkner, yeah. Faulkner was recruited by, you know, the Kemp regime. Right. Not to play this, you know, 
racehorse hockey that Dean Blaze ended up playing. So you never know what he might have become if Mike Kemp had still been at the helm. He might have been a solid lights out yeah. goaltender. But but so, I, I I agree with you. I I I was close to picking it, him, and I'm like I've got to, I've got to put Evan in. I mean, we loved Evan. We loved Evan, and yeah. that's that's the like, the, the <laughs> heart wrenching part of this. Like my heart says put Evan, and then I'm like I don't know, but Faulkner. All right. Plus, All I right. know that your wife and my I wife know. like Evan's mom, so you know, know. We, gotta, we gotta yeah. Evan will never talk to me again. Well, don't worry. Sucks. Don't right. worry. I, I represent it here. <laughs> don't worry. We love uh, you, Evan. All right. Defense. Defense. We're starting with the first I'm, team defense. I'm going to go first team, first guy out of the gate, Suster. Yep. I had Andre Suster, too. Uh, you you got to go with him. Yeah. And at Ev, like, he had success at the next level. You know, he really was reliable in Every he represented something that we didn't have in the early 2000s before Dean Blaze came, which was you know uh, he represented those those kind of pure pro prospect, yeah, big tall defensemen that we really needed. And, and you look at him; he was a statistical giant too. You know what's funny is I've talked to people about a current player about Wah, yeah. and I can't count the number of times that someone said, "I hope he turns out to be like Suster." Yep. So if he could play to that level with his size, I mean, that would be huge for us, right? So oh, like yeah. the we, fact we've, that we've people heard, compare... We've heard that, we've heard that Alex Waugh has a 100-mile-an-hour slap shot. We yeah. heard that today. I mean, he, he's a guy... We Suster was one of those. He was dependable. He was solid. Fans loved him. Right. From a defense standpoint. So yeah. the thing that got me for sure him being the top was if people are comparing and saying that the guys currently on the team need to perform to that level or be that kind of guy... That tells me, you know, there's someone that belongs on a first team all decade kind of team. He was pretty damn decent offensively too. I mean, yeah, you know, his his third season here, he didn't stay the full four. You know, he nine he goals, didn't sixteen need assists. To stay the full four, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of those great pro talent defensemen. He yeah. was solid. I that that was that was the thing that Dean Blaze brought us were some of those pro caliber recruits that we hadn't seen before and we haven't we haven't yet seen since so the other pairing with him i've got on the first okay first team is snuggerud you went with snuggy i would i had thought about picking luke snuggerud i wanted to pick luke snuggerud i thought jason might pick luke snuggerud <laughs> cuz you got to go with snuggy the number of times i got to you know tweet that snuggy, snuggy. <laughs> gif when he did something good that's a solid pick. I picked Bryce Anilowski. Ooh, okay. Yeah. That's a name I'm not overly familiar with. So yeah, he was. Do explain. From, he was here from 2010 to 2013. He was yeah. a solid defenseman, statistically solid like Andre Suster. He was a guy that I loved. It was it was a player that I loved. He wasn't you know a flashy type of defenseman, but this is a guy who you know again his his junior season five goals sixteen assists. I was, you know, look at those offensive numbers because it's it's great when you can get a, a solid kind of, what I consider to be more of sort of a stay at home defenseman type guy that gets good offensive numbers. So yeah, right. Anilowski was a guy, just a name that then popped into my head. I liked him. I thought he was good. And you put him on your first team. I put him on my first team. I had All to right. be a little bit different. So who'd you put on your? Now I really want to know who's on your second. <laughs> I'll say you're going to the second. Is Snuggy on your second team, or is yeah. he doesn't even make the list? Snuggy is on my second team. Okay, and Luke Snuggery, and I'm going with Jake Jacob Megna. Megna, okay, yeah. He I was. Had to, I had to get one of the Megna brothers. Now, Jason Megna played for UNO too, but he only played here for one, one year. season. I know he was. Me. He was one I thought about, but I thought about putting him. I thought about making him. I'll just spoiler alert. He did not spoilers. Make, he did not make my list of forwards, but I thought about putting him on there. I just had trouble wanting to put a guy who only played here for one season. That was that was the struggle that I had with that. But yep, I went with Jacob Megna. He's a good, solid defenseman. While he was a great defenseman, he's been successful at the next level too, which yeah. I know is not. I know you and I aren't using that as a consideration there, but yep, had to go with had to have one of the Megna brothers because. I loved watching the Magna brothers when they were here. 
So I've got Cooper. Okay. And O'Rourke. Oh, yeah. I thought about O'Rourke, too. I looked okay. him up. Um, yeah, and Cooper. Cooper was a solid defense. Cooper was it. solid D. Yep. O'Rourke, for me, really, like, he makes the list not so much from a stats perspective. Right, because his stats are not, you know... I really felt being around him yeah. and and talking to him in when he was here mm-hmm. that he really helped glue that team together. Yeah. And sometimes I think the casual fan doesn't see that, but I right. really felt like he meant a lot to that team. Sure. And so he was a captain. I just, you know, he gave us locker room tours. He yeah, he was Brian, always Brian, willing to interact Brian with O'Rourke the fans. A, and, yeah, O'Rourke was a great guy. And so I really appreciated his, you know, his willingness to mm-hmm. engage the fans. Exactly. And so I thought he was deserving at least of a second team. I all was game. close to picking him to. And Cooper's just Cooper was a rock on the back end for us. I just couldn't overlook. It. I I really thought about do, do I need to put someone ahead of him, and I just. I just remember him being a solid force for us, and so I couldn't I couldn't pick anyone over. He was over a good, him. solid stay at home defenseman, and and he was a, a recent year kind of guy when those teams didn't have the talent. You know what I'm saying? That some of those teams in the you know early 2010s, yeah, had. But yeah, Brian O'Rourke, not a statistical giant, but you're right, solid four years out of him. And Cooper, Coop Daddy, yeah. So forwards. Yeah, forwards. Now we get into some injuries. So you're gonna have to give me your your whole line here. My okay, my first team forwards, right? First team, three forwards. Okay. I'm going with Ryan Walters. Oh yeah. Right. Walters. Okay. Terry Broadhurst. Broadhurst, good pick. And Austin Ortega. I threw Ortega in there. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> John's laughing because I am in like a state of disbelief that he there is. is a name that is not on your first team. You you were thinking uh, that I was going to include. Well, is it is it the name that everybody talks about a certain a certain a certain guy who plays hockey in Pittsburgh? Is that uh, is that who you thought might be on there? He's not on your. He better at least be on your second team. For well, God's we'll, we'll, sake. Just, we'll have to find out here momentarily. Yeah, momentarily whether he is. Oh my not. gosh, dude! Like, talk, drop a bomb on me, will you? Jeez, <laughs> like, it's Gensel. <laughs> I mean, come on, dude. I was like, I I wrote that down, going, we may only have one pick the same. It's this one. I literally thought that when I wrote it down. I'm well, like, I, I very, I could see that we don't have the same people. Like, you may have the same name on a second team sure. that I have on a first. Like, sure. But yeah. I thought for sure that name, first team, both of us, hands down. Nothing against your list. Sorry. Nothing against my. No, Nothing against fine. your picks because I think fine. they're good picks. I'm just thinking, wow. Part of the reason I didn't do that was because I knew it would be expected. That's true. There's a lot of fans of him. Look, I. He is on mine, I thought, so I, I save you all out there that are going crazy. During right the now. three years he was here, Jake was solid. He was a solid component of that team. Yeah, but I got to tell you, I mean, I just I think about a guy like Terry Broadhurst, a guy that a lot of people might have overlooked, but he was really important on our roster at that point in time. I thought he left too early. He was supposed to stay for his senior year because his brother Alex Broadhurst was coming in as a recruit, and then Alex decided not to come, and Terry decided not to, and they went and played for the Rockford Ice Hogs. But I thought he was a solid guy. I thought he was kind of a different pick. That's why I threw him in there. And then, obviously, I had to go with Ryan Walters because, you know, Wally Verhoeven was one of my favorite players. A solid yeah. guy. He was a guy who was one of those kind of big recruits that you would have normally seen play for a team like uh, the Gophers, mm-hmm. and I just thought he was a solid rock on the roster. And there yeah, was... I remember them talking about kind of the steal of the decade for UNO, just yep. not expected to come to yep. a team like us. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard when you. It's hard when you're talking about those guys who played most of their games or all of their games in the right. WCHA, as opposed to the ones who uh, played most of their games in the NCHC, like Jake. So. 
<clears throat> all right. Jake played all of his in the NCHC. So, so yeah, so, so that's who I got. Yeah. I, all right. So Gensel's on mine. Okay. Uh, the other two, I've got Archibald. Yep. Yep. He, he almost made my first team. Okay. Almost made my first team. I didn't want to go with all, you know, early era guys. So that's why I threw Ortega in there. Polk. You good job on yeah, good job on James Polk. I was looking at him today. I thought about that. I I've all I, I always liked his play. Yeah. And he was a beast on that shot from the point from the top of the circles on the power play. Like it was just money every time someone could feed it to him. So I I really I liked his play. Uh, I think defensively, you know, obviously some guys that are that offensive minded can can kind of lack in the defensive Mm -hmm. um but i never felt like we were losing a step defensively with him out there you know even though we are going to get that offensive rush yep um and i just genso was a no-brainer to me i mean i just think he meant a lot to the program a lot of the future of the program you know he really took it to the next level Mm -hmm. and he's continued that i think he's been a great ambassador for the university uh with the pittsburgh penguins despite the fact that i dislike the penguins um i will still <laughs> cheer for him to score three goals and lose four to three every night yeah i'm totally all right second string because now i'm really <laughs> i'm like really interested in edge of my team. seat who's all right what <laughs> all right do i need to my go or no i'll go okay i uh, went with josh archibald jake ginsel and brock montpettit Oh, yeah, on Pettit. That's a good pick. Yeah. Yeah, he popped into my head. Um, He he didn't have the stats that I thought he had, but he was, those were, again, Archibald was, Archibald was, his senior year was terrific, and, uh, or his junior year, I don't remember. Let's look up Arch. I'm pulling up Archibald here. Since he wasn't on on my notes. Yeah. Archibald is a guy who, you know, probably should have been the first team guy, but... Yep, two years at oh. UNO. So it was a sophomore year, 29 goals, 14 assists. Yeah, he was, again, he was one of those big, strong forwards that Dean Blaze was able to get, especially early on in his yeah. tenure. And he was a guy that I liked a lot, and he's having a lot of success still. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, he comes back to the community, which is something I really appreciate. Yep. Uh, is that he's come back for some charity events and things like that, and so... He's still a maverick through and through, which I think means a lot. And Mon Pettit was a guy who, uh, he had a great senior outing, and I don't know, he was just one of my favorite players. He and Johnny Searfoss were two guys that I liked during those mm-hmm. during those years. So, yeah, had to, had to give a little love to Brock. So, you had Ortega on your first. I mm-hmm. have him on my second. <clears throat> Good, um, solid choice. Yeah, I don't know how you leave him off this. I mean... I don't know how you do either. I mean, he I was think... a he was a Hobie Baker finalist. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, finalist. Uh, I mean, just rock star numbers. And for a guy that I think a lot of people coming out of California thought, yeah, he's not going to have. Kind it. of a smallish guy. Yeah. yeah, he was. But you know what? He he performed well. Right. He's a UNO could use a a guy like him on the roster this season. So yeah, I know he was. Yeah, one of my favorite players during those years. He had a great senior campaign, and he was one of those clutch type scorers. Um, Randolph. Oh, was on my list. Yeah, the, mm-hmm. yeah, it was Jake Randolph, and then there was the other Lancer. And that's one thing I loved is that he was a Lancer and came. Yeah, he was he was a rock solid player in those kind of those recent years when again the team didn't and have the talent. We've talked about I talked about it earlier about people looking at Wa saying, you know, I hope that he can be like Suster kind of yeah. thing. Um I've heard a number of people saying I hope Sullivan can be as reliable as Randolph. Yeah, and, and so, so far so he's again, looking like he is. Yeah, yeah, and when people can start when when I hear from other fans, I hope this current player plays like this former player. That's just, I think, a clear indication that that guy meant a lot to this program and to these fans. And so that's why Randolph made my list. Oh, absolutely. Yo, that was a, that was a, he was a good, solid, good, solid pick. Yeah. Good pick. I, um, 
gosh, it was so hard to know. There were a lot of good, a lot of good, yeah. Tyler Vessel, it was Randolph and Vessel were the two. Oh, yeah, Vessel, and Vessel was another. Vessel was a solid forward, too. Yeah. Guy, I should have looked. I would have thrown one of those guys in. <laughs> <laughs> Jason's I should have put still stunned. He thought Ginsel would be on my first team for I Olympic. Really thought so. Look, but... I, so we didn't have to talk about it ahead of time. I'm like, I'm gonna just be kind of interesting. So I threw uh, Broadhurst on there because he was a player that I loved back in the day, and yeah, so... I tried to be a little bit different on that. So, so a while ago we did a we did a, a short segment on terminology in hockey. Oh great! Are we doing another one here? I'm gonna ask you: Do you, when when someone says the guy's a can opener, do you know what they're referring no, to? No. What are they referring to, Jason? Let's. So what is a what is it when a guy's a can? I'm like how yeah. you're just bringing up surprise topics here. I know. Since we're so <laughs> guys a can opener. So what made you decide to bring this All up? All right. So I've got a guy on my list that I don't think I don't know that a lot of people would necessarily put here, but I put him here because he's to me he was kind of the quintessential can opener. The can opener is a guy on a team that you can throw into any situation in any environment, and they are useful and productive. Okay, so they're, they're the could, jack of all trades. I feel guy. like you could also call they they, they should can opener is good. I mean, okay. if I if I were in charge of hockey terms, not only would I not use the term apples for assist, <laughs> I hate that. I would also I would instead of can opener, I'd probably use like Swiss Army knife. But then yeah, but then you get into branding thing. Yeah, I know it is. Yeah, exactly. I don't. I don't need them. You know, Victor Victor Knox would be coming after you for yeah. Okay, so anyway, so So can can opener. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Wait, are you still picking? We're not done yet. So here we go. My last, my last guy. Oh, Jason still has a pick. I thought we were done and moving on. No. Okay. So last pick. Here we go. Ready? So you did. Who did you? Who? So who are your second team forwards again? Ortega and Randolph. Okay, so yeah, who's Dominic Zombo? Zombo was a great pick. I had him in my notes. Oh, I did wanted you? to pick him. Yeah, you should have picked him, dude. Well, you know, there were there were there were players I was obligated to have on my list because <laughs> fans would have been shocked if I didn't. Yep, Dominic Zombo, great Zombo. leadership potential. Oh yeah, yeah. Was he ever a captain? I don't remember. I, I don't think wasn't Broadhurst it? was his first year. Wasn't Dom? I think Dominic was a, uh, I think he was a captain. Wasn't he a captain his senior year? I That was the early days of me coming I in, so I was know. still a little bit of a DU kind of crazy guy, so I don't remember. Um, Dominic Zom. I'm sure the fans will hate me for that, but. Well, here's the thing. I've been here the whole time, and I it's hard for me. I'll just say it's as much minutia as I remember about this team. It's really hard for me to remember who you know, the leadership was because number one, it doesn't have it on the, well, maybe it does have it on the UNO website. I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes. Not. See, and you have to remember that there's those days of like Dean Blaze doing the rotating captains and assistant captains and stuff where, you know, you don't have one guy that's the, Dominic the C all year. Zombo captain. I thought he was. I'm I mean, just Googling he it. just kind of, yeah. <laughs> Let's Google say. Oh, and served as an assistant. Cat. Let's hold on here. We're gonna, we're yeah. You know, we get do, we everybody do, we get do, dinged. Do. Yeah, we get dinged for dead air all the time. So let's uh, captain. Um. Well, before UNO, he was an assistant captain. So it's possible he was for UNO. Uh, not important. Yeah, it's possible. Quite honestly, I didn't pick them whether they were or not. I just thought okay, this cool. was my, like, I want to go out there. I want to pick guys that weren't necessarily, you know, offensive powerhouses. I or... totally would have picked him, too. I just, you know, I, I'm going to just... show you. I have his screenshot ah. right here. I was ready to do that. And you know what? Honestly, I got to be honest with you. His senior year, he was dealing with injuries. Yeah. That was one of the issues. But... Quite honestly, his sophomore and junior year, he was a statistical giant. I mean, when you get 17 goals and 17 assists in a season, that's you're a good, solid, solid. player. No, he was a yeah. fantastic player. Good size, nice rush down the middle. His uncle played for the Kansas City Chiefs Yeah, at that time. Yeah? Yeah. yeah no, his I, I believe it was – I'm trying to remember. I think it was his dad. Yes, Baldwin, Missouri. It was his dad that we got a chance to meet. Great guy, love Mad Puck. So maybe I should have picked him. Yeah. Yeah, maybe we tossed 
So we toss against the off the list and just put Zombo. Yeah, in I mean, it's, like, <laughs> it's, it's going to be controversially. <laughs> Well, it's just everybody loves Ginsel now. Everyone does. And yeah. I'm not, you know me, I'm I'm kind of a fan of the guys that, you know, are kind of the unsung heroes. So I okay. love that Dominic Zombo pick. And I love well, there you the go. can opener term. There you go. I'll we'll see. If, that that one I'll use. Yeah, that the, one I'll definitely the, use. Yeah, the, the listeners here, I, I'm curious how many of you have heard the, the term well, a can opener before. They're so. like with the apples thing. They're like, oh, yeah. No, I've, I've totally heard like that. It. Yeah, I totally knew that. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about on Mad Puck. Yeah, hey, whatever. All right. Everyone's an expert when they can Google it between episodes. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, no, I'm totally down with Zombo. Zombo was a great... That was just... That, those were great guys back yeah. then. Yeah. And I will say, those are some great picks you made. They're... Thank you. Some yeah. good, 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 guys solid guys. Yeah, this you is hard. You know, getting yeah. it just down to this. That's why I said if we just did two D three forwards, yeah, a goaltender. I, I mean, think of all these guys that we wouldn't have talked about. There so are hopefully, so many guys. Yeah, I mean, if we tried to do like an all time team over the past twenty two years, that would be. I think end of season. Listen for it. I think we should commit to doing that. Okay. Yeah. End of end of the year this year. Our mm-hmm. last episode. Let's do an all Maverick, all time team, all time division and second one team. Yeah, yep, yeah. And we'll really get we'll get into some of those back years before me. Yeah, because so you, because you know, you know you a lot you. of those guys are my favorite guys, yeah. and I will definitely be including them. And there were a lot some of, of them the, coach my kids. There so. were a lot. Yeah, exactly. There were a lot of those can. We may have type to of, put them on there just for playing points for children. That's right. <laughs> yep. That's right. Yeah, my. See, there we go. See, we should have just made Blank and Blankenberg was my favorite. Yeah, Blanks, <laughs> totally. He was clutch. You could bring him in at North Dakota, and he'd get you the win. Still so, shut out, yeah. Yeah, so that was fun. Yeah, great. And cool. I mean, for the fans out there, we'd love for you to tweet at us, comment so, yeah. when I share the podcast, comment on Facebook, comment on the message board, and let us know who your uh, favorite players of yeah. the past decade were. Let us know who we missed, because I'm sure that there's guys out there that you were fans of, that you really appreciated you know, maybe something they did for you guys or, or yeah. you just like their play on the ice. And, yeah. you know, let us know who, who you would have had on the list. So many good really guys. There are the heroes like Jake Ginsel who've gone on to, you know, fortune and glory in the NHL, who's been just a fantastic story. His dad and his mom, we got a chance to meet them. They were great. And then there are a lot of those lunch pail guys like the Dominic Zombos of the world who... Yeah. You know, weren't the flashy guys? You didn't really hear about them at the next level, but they were—they were great while they were here. So we had a lot of a lot of good times and a lot of good players the past decade. So, so looking forward to some of the guys we're going to be talking about in the next decade if this podcast lasts another ten years. <laughs> Keep us going. Keep it going. So wrap this thing up. We got to talk about the next series next weekend. We head north to North Dakota. Yep, we're rolling up I twenty nine to Grand Forks. Now we have to. Now things get serious. Yeah, now things get real. As yeah. if it wasn't real before, but but this is gonna be a this is gonna be a definitely definite reality check this weekend. So North Dakota is currently playing Huntsville. They won on Friday night. Uh, Huntsville had it tied 2-2 there for a little bit, but North Dakota scored a couple. Yeah, um, do you have an update on that? As we sit now, they're halfway through the third period, and North Dakota's leading 4-2. So, okay, so it we're... looks like North Dakota's going to roll to sweep on Huntsville. So what do you think? Do we stand a chance going in there? I mean, they're at home right. again, so... I don't know. Have they we're lost on their home? We're on their turf. Have they lost at home this season? I think so. I don't know. Let's look. Um, no. I don't think they have. Another team with no losses, huh? Another team with no home losses this season. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one. Now, we're a team that has gone into Grand Forks and played well. During our our history in the NCHC and our our years, just a couple years there in the uh, WCHA. So, what do you think? You and I were pretty feeling pretty bullish going into the main series. What do you think about UNO rolling in to Grand Forks? I'm here's what I'm gonna do. Okay. okay? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? I'm gonna say that we split. One and one. 
Right. I'm going to say that we win on Saturday. A lot of times I say we're going to win on Friday. Okay. I think we'll... I think Friday game may be a tough game for us, but I think we'll be able to make adjustments between games. Isaiah Seville will be back. I think that the team will find a way to get it done on Saturday, and we'll get the split, which would be a great way to start what is the meat of the NCHC schedule. It's going to be tough because it's not going to get any easier because then we've got you know Denver coming into Omaha the following weekend. Who we've been... We Snake haven't we haven't won every... since I think I think I was there. I think it was out in Denver in twenty third fall of twenty thirteen. I think that was the last time we beat them. It's a long stretch of loss. It's a long time ago. Uh I am not gonna follow your bullish predictions. Okay. I'm gonna say we get swept. That's that is that's definitely fair. As we um, just mentioned, North Dakota's They're a good team. Potentially undefeated at home if they if they out. close out Huntsville here, yeah. yeah. Uh, They're a really good my, team this year. They've been down the past couple of years, but you knew they weren't going to be down forever. Right. Yeah. I'm my biggest concern is Seville. Right. And not a talent thing. It's he went out to the juniors as the third string goaltender. Spencer Knight right. was the clear number one for the US out there. And so his last game situation was playing for us like a month ago. That's, That's a right. long time for a goaltender to kind of sit cold. And yeah. he didn't get much playing time from what I've heard in just in practice even when he was out with the World Juniors. No, you know, when, when, we, when so, we had heard about that, you know, before the season, we thought maybe he might... You know, get a lot of playing time, get a lot of looks, and we were thinking that's uh, some good experience for him, you know? But Yeah, but the way Spencer Knight's been playing, I I mean, I was actually questioning when he went out, like, is it really worth it for him? Right. I really questioned it. Like, I appreciate that he got the experience of, you know, being on the world stage and that stuff, but, yep. I mean, he literally went out there to write a bench. Sure. And I kind of think, from a UNO standpoint, he would have been better playing Arizona and Maine for us than sitting watching Canada, Russia, Finland. So <laughs> it's an honor to be picked, Jake. It is, it's an and it's a picked. great experience but, for the kid. But again, the Maverick fan in me says, "Gosh, we could have used him. We could have used uh, him. We really could have." And no knock to Roden because he did a great job. So, so I don't know. I kind of worry about that. Now, the one thing I will say is sometimes goaltenders can be strange. And it sure. would not surprise me if he's just so well rested that he comes out and has an amazing performance. So I'm going to say that we get swept, but I'm going to say if I'm wrong, I think we shock him on Friday. Okay, so you think we're going to come out of the gate and that's when we're going to surprise him is the first game that they might be a little bit overconfident against. Yeah, obviously I think it's, it's, it's like hard a, because it's a, a conference game, so nobody really overlooks anybody. But and I think I it's going to be a low. If I, the way I see it is, if we if we squeak out a win, it's an amazing performance by Seville, and we win like one nothing or two one. It's a low scoring affair. Okay, if we get into so you don't think it's going to be. You, you don't think if we if we get into a shootout type. No, of game, if we gonna, get into a back and forth kind of thing, I don't think we can hold with North Dakota. I yeah. don't. We don't have that kind of firepower. No, and you look, and, and these are names that we've been hearing the last few years, and I'm just looking at their stats right now. You've got guys like Jordan Kawaguchi, yep. you know, Grant Mismash, yeah, Weston Michaud. I mean, they've got, yeah. It's going to so, be tough. It's going to be tough. And yeah. Adam Shield, their goaltender, has a 1.59 goals against average. So this He's is, this is probably not a game, you know, series where we're going to end up in a 6-4 to four type shootout. No. I mean, who knows? We but, need... We need we need Seville to be amazing. Right. And we need our power play to be productive. We do. Because they're going to take some penalties. And, we, and when they do, we need to capitalize. And we've got to be better about getting the puck out of our defensive zone. That's one of the things that's yeah. just kind of been a, a kind of a, a long standing problem with the team and it's it's been our Achilles heel from yeah. the get-go. And the problem is is that coming into the sled, two teams that, that will hound you on the puck in your defensive zone. 
Denver and North Dakota. Yeah. So we face them the next two weeks. Yep. Yeah. In the country, I would say probably two of the best teams at being a pain in your butt just to get past the first blue line. Absolutely. And so that worries me. Absolutely right. I think the the potential is there for the guys to steal a game. I think so too. And if we can if we can stay if we can get our chances and come close and you know stay even with them at zero through you know halfway through the game or something, I think that'll build a lot of confidence. And say, well, hey, and, we can steal. Yeah, this. and you know as well as I do, teams that are that are you know outmatched by North Dakota a lot of times go in there and they'll play their best game because that's oh, yeah. North Dakota is one of those programs where teams do that, and so. If and they're one that, of those teams that has a potential yeah. to overlook. But we can't North have, we can't have those teams. mental lapses. We can't yeah. have the deal where we like fall apart in the second half of the second period like we've done in recent games. Yep. They've got to play tough and they've got to play tight and they've got to they've got to play disciplined hockey for guys have talked about it full minutes. sixty minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, they've talked about it in the press conferences. This has to be a full sixty minute game. Yep. If you want to win this. Absolutely. And we need guys like, you know, Nolan Sullivan, Joey Abate, Ryan Brochette. Brandon Scanlon, all those guys to step up and and uh, get it done along with veterans like Taylor Ward. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see. But I'm excited. I know you're excited. Yeah, absolutely, I'm always to watching that. We'll be watching that on. Uh, I think you can watch it if you have Cox Cable here in Omaha on your oh, view. Yeah. And you and I will be watching it on NCHC TV because that's that's the way we roll. And I'll be in Minnesota. So oh, you are. So yeah. you're in a you're at a, a youth hockey tournament. Youth Where, hockey what, tournament. What, what strange place in Minnesota are you going to be? Albert Lee. Oh, Albert Lee. That's not too strange. No, that's well known. Right off the interstate there. Yeah. Mildly strange. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's one of those towns you fly through along 35 going north. That's right. Yeah. I, I'm going up to the Twin Cities. You know, you might stop there for of, gas. There's stop some... there and then cut over and go to Mankato. Yeah, absolutely. So oh, there's a Tesla charging facility there. Is there? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so there is. <laughs> if Jason and I had Teslas, which we would love to have Teslas, you know. We gotta start making more money off this podcast. Yeah. If that's ever gonna happen, and then we can start a podcast talking about our Teslas. So that would be fun. Paid for by the Mavpug Patreon. <laughs> paid for. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm just telling you right now, your, your hopes of getting a Tesla paid for by anything Mavpug related is probably not gonna happen. <laughs> but it's a nice thought. So if we have hey, some angel donor, dreams are made angel of. donor out there, yeah, we can get it done. But in the meantime. Till that day. Till that day. Be sure to follow Mav Puck on Twitter. Follow us on Facebook. Follow the website MavPuck.com. And until next time, go Mavs. Go Mavs. Go Mavs.